Brian, let's start with the big picture. Canadian spending growth moved into positive territory for the first time since the start of the pandemic and the week ended July 10th. What's driving this improved spending this summer? It's been a welcome change. Um, it may only have been about 2% growth that we saw in that, that first week, uh, but that came after three months of decline. And when you look at those declines and what drove that, it's a similar story uh, in terms of that rebound. Uh, we saw that as the lockdowns uh, went into place, it became quite tight. That's when you saw that big pullback. As those have begun to be lifted, as people have been able to go back uh, to the shops, go back to a little bit of a, a normal routine, we've seen the spending patterns go with that. So I think that's really been the key here is that people have had that confidence to go back out and, and sort of get back to, uh, to normal. And which categories are you seeing uh, the biggest shift upwards or downwards uh, in terms of spending as we start to see these reopenings? Uh, you know, it's been a little bit, again, of that reverse. When we first saw the lockdowns, we saw the grocery stores, uh, home improvement stores, you know, really uh, taking up a lot of that share, you know, essentially uh, essential kind of uh, resources. As things have started to become open, we've seen a little bit of a normalization, again, to use that word. Uh, some of the areas that weren't available, people now able to, to spend, we've seen those gain. Grocery store falling off a little bit. Uh, one I would point out is professional services, things like chiropractors, dentists, the like. You know, as uh, more provinces have started to reopen and as a lot of these uh, service providers have, you know, plans, different ways of doing business. We've seen people, you know, going back and spending there. That's been a, a, a big shift. Um, there's two interesting exceptions, I would say, across that, even as we've seen things normalize. Travel, uh, maybe unsurprisingly, still very, very low, uh, very little spending in that category. And conversely, those home improvement stores, we had this theme early on, you know, people stuck at home, maybe trying to do a little bit of improvement there, you know, finishing some projects they had put off. That's still holding up quite well, uh, even into the early summer. Uh, what about business spending? What are some of the trends that you're seeing there? Uh, there it's a little bit softer. We're still seeing a positive trend. Uh, you know, we're off those lows, uh, but still down about 7%, uh, 8% year on year uh, in that first week of July. Uh, I think we're, the challenge we're seeing there is that it's a reflection of the, the difficulties for small business. Uh, we know from some of their associations, only about 60% of those businesses uh, were even open at that time. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a skew towards some of the more challenged areas. Uh, travel and tourism, you know, stand out a little bit there, particularly in some of the big city centers. So I think there's that, that key difference that that spending pattern that shifted on the consumer side, um, you know, that's causing a little bit of, of pain for some of those small businesses. Uh, what are some of the risks or headwinds to further increases in spending? Uh, you know, I go back to what has enabled this, the spending gains we've seen. Uh, it's, you know, controlling the infection curve that in turn, you know, allowing the governments to have you know, confidence in reopening and then having consumer confidence that people, you know, uh, feel comfortable going out knowing that, you know, obviously the risk is not gone, but we're, you know, we have some control there. It's not quite what it was. So as we've seen some of the, the cases rise back up, um, you know, certainly uh, the Western province stand out, Ontario as well. I think there's that risk there that, you know, one, you could see the openings maybe delayed or, or, or slowed, uh, the remaining openings. But even beyond that, I think it's that core question of, you know, consumer confidence. Do people feel comfortable going out, you know, even if the stores are open? Uh, and so you have some that risk that, you know, rising infections really put that at risk. And then, you know, knock on effects of things like, you know, the job market, real estate, all those positive trends we've seen over the last uh, month, month and a half. You know, that's the risk that, you know, uh, a rise in infections really, really puts that uh, in a pinch. Right. So given everything that we know, what's the one thing that viewers should take away from the spending data? Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to share a little bit of positive news here. that We are seeing this encouraging trend, but I think we really have to keep in mind those shifting patterns. So even though that overall spending is moving in the right direction, it's not evenly shared. You know, some industries clearly gainers uh, from, from these trends others more challenged. I think that differentiation is really important to keep in mind you know, when you are looking at this data and looking at these trends. Brian, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you for having me.